Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be building one of these, which is of course a beam engine. In order to make this happen, we're going to be using a combination of a very small amount of Expresso on this occasion, along with an IK rig and a target tag, and some very careful grouping. They're the elements that we're going to need in order to make this thing function correctly. That's what we're about in this tutorial, so without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. I'll start by bringing in a rectangle. We can leave it in the XY plane, that's fine. Its width can stay at 400 and I'll make its height 20. Rounding what we switched on and we'll leave it at 10 because that's perfectly good for what we need. So we're on the way to making the actual beam of the beam engine. The next thing to do is bring in a circle. We'll make its radius 5 and then I will command drag to create another two circles. This one I will move minus 90 or rather 190 along its x-axis and this one 190 along its x. So they're all in position and ready to go and we've got our centre pivot point ready to go too. So everything is good. We can select all of these. In fact what I'll do is put the rectangle at the top. Select all of these, make them editable by hitting C and then connect objects and delete. Moving on from here we can place this into an extrude. Much much too big in the offset, something like 20 I think will be fine for that. That will give us our beam. And in the caps we'll just put a bit of rounding on, we'll just say 1 for the rounding and that should be fine, I think that looks good. So if we just zoom in a little closer, in fact I'll hit O for object, we can get closer that way. We can see that we've got our beam and that, that's all ready to go. Moving on from here, I'm going to bring in a cylinder. I will orientate it plus Z. Its radius will be 5 and its height 30. In its coordinates along the Z axis it needs to move 10 to place it in the middle of the beam. I can now command drag to create two copies. The first needs to be moved minus 190 and the second 190 and now they're in the correct spots. What we can do now is just move these below the extrude and select all of these and then hit option G to group them and we'll call this beam. Okay, the next thing we need to do is think about making the link piece that goes at this end. Once again I'll bring in a rectangle. This time make it 20 in the width and 80 in the height and move it minus 190 in the X and minus 60 in the Y which is slightly too far so we won't go minus 60. <laughs> I think we'll go a little bit less than that maybe minus 30. Minus 30 is correct. So once again we'll add the rounding so that we get the correct shape and we're almost in the correct position. I mean, we, we probably need to move this over a little bit, but we'll leave it there for now. The next thing to do is bring in two more circles. So we'll bring one in. Once again, we'll make the radius five. And in the coordinates, we'll move it to minus 190, which puts it in the correct place. We can command drag to create a copy and then move this down minus 60 this time and that should be right and it is. So we'll move these beneath our rectangle, select all of them, hit C to make them editable and once again connect objects and delete. Hold down the option key and drop these into an extrude but before I do that I'm just going to rotate 
my spline here I'm just going to rotate this through 180 degrees because that way when we do the extrude it will point in the correct direction hold down the option key and do the extrusion and there we go it's pointing in the correct direction and we'll make this 2.5 that's all it needs to be and in the caps we'll add a rounding of one as we did before and let's just see where we are yeah it does need to move over so if we just get a hold of this extrude and we move it in the Z and it will want to go minus 2.5 yeah that's fine so that's in the correct spot and looking very nice what I'll do here is rename this front and then just close it up and command drag to copy and call this rear and then this can be positioned and it needs to be positioned at 25 along the z-axis which should work fine that's the the link piece well and truly on the way and what I can do here where I've got this cylinder up here I can command drag to copy that drop it under the rear there and then simply move it down minus 60 and it's in the correct spot and there are all the pieces of our link ready to go so we can group all of these by hitting option G and call this link and the link needs to be grouped into the beam and we can just move the beam itself to the top so we've got our link so we've got our beam and we've got our link so that's ready to go moving on from here I'm going to create the actual piston that gets pumped by the link so we'll move on to that next before we get there we'll just move these above our link because I need the link second in the chain really after the extrude and these moving on from here then what we can do is grab a hold of another null and I'm going to drop this into let's just see where we are uh, yeah I need to drop it into the cylinder yeah this this cylinder is in the link if I drop it in there I can zero it out oops zero it out and then remove it from the link and simply call it piston and that's ready to go bring in a cube drop it into the piston zero it out and make it 20 by 20 by 20 and that is in the correct spot and we're ready to go from here I'll just hit O for object and now we can think about making this editable so we can hit C I'll hit F4 to go into my front view and with my live selection tool I will select with the uh, with, the, with the actual visible only off I need to go into polygon mode as well just select the front and rear polygons I can then just click visible only again because I will also need to shift select that one so we've got all of those selected the next thing to do is hit I for inset we're set with an offset of five centimeters which is perfect for what we need so I'll hit apply and now we've got everything set up there our display I'll just change to lines momentarily hit MB for bridge and then I'm going to bridge between these two points I can now go back to garage shading lines and isopalms we're set on there that's fine and I can now just hit D for extrude and, and 200 is actually fine for what we need so in our tool hit apply and we've now got the basic shape of our piston and that's all looking great to so finish it off we simply need to hold down the option key and select subdivision surface and now we can switch to edge mode and start doing a bit more work just to get this looking the way we want it to so we'll select our cube UL and see where we go from here so we, we want this edge loop here we'll want the inner edge loop so we just need to 
shift select that one we can shift select this loop and we can shift select this one we'll want this in a loop that we can't actually see but if I just shift select here I know that I've selected that one and then I'll just hit O for object and shift select this loop too so everything is ready to go and all we've got to do is hold down the full stop key click and drag and we'll get the shape that we want and we've created our piston and it looks great fantastic so moving on from here i'll just hit f1 to go back to our 3d view moving on from here then we'll probably do a couple of inanimate objects now we'll do the actual tube that this goes into the actual cylinder that the piston goes up and down in and we'll also create the actual center pillar that supports the beam those will be the next things that we'll be creating but it's all starting to take shape and we are now beginning to see that we're getting something resembling a beam engine to make the cylinder for the piston not surprisingly we'll start with the cylinder drop it into the cube and zero it out remove it from there now this cylinder needs to be 20 in its radius 150 in height at the present time and we can give it one height segment that's fine rotation segments just eight because we will be putting it into a subdivision surface we'll just drop this down somewhere here let's just see where we are actually we'll switch to the front view H just see where we are so we're I think we're okay somewhere around there it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect so we'll leave it where it is in the caps for this we'll give it two segments I think um, that should be enough I think that should be okay and then we can make it editable so we've got our two caps there in fact we could have three but we'll, we'll, we'll sort that out afterwards I think we'll leave that as it is we'll switch to uh, polygon mode UL select these these inner ones here and then we'll D for extrude we only want to go 10 on this occasion just get a little bit closer get the object hit O for the object now I'll hit KL for a loop cut and cut through there and then switch back to UL and delete these polygons and I think that will work okay for us yes that looks good I mean you can extrude downwards if you wish to but I think deleting the polygons on this occasion will be adequate we'll leave that as it is and then it will be a case of UL and selecting both of these D for extrude again and this time go 5 and UL to select this outer the outer edge here and then again D for extrude and we'll go five again and that should be fine in fact we'll go ten let's make that ten and in the tool that's fine for the apply and that gives us the shape of our cylinder and that all looks great to me the next thing we need to do is drop this into a subdivision surface so that we can work on getting it the right shape so we'll hold down the option key and get that sorted out and then we can select our edge mode and start working with this we'll select this loop this loop this loop the inner loop there that loop and the bottom loop and if we hold down the full stop key and drag we get the shape that we want and that looks great so that's all fine and dandy looking very nice so now we can think about making the cradle that the beam actually sits upon and of course the central pillar that the cradle itself 
sits upon. So that's going to be our next port of call. I'll bring in a cube. It's actually in the right place. We can make it 20 in the height, 20 in the X and 2.5 in the Z. Just go into our top view, so F2, hit over object and we can see where we are. We need to bring this forward so that it sits somewhere around there. I'm going to add a fillet to this actually. Um, but I won't, actually I won't do that. Let's just go into our 3D view again. Hit O for object, see where we are. We're okay, we're actually okay. We're not doing too badly there. I think if we just go to our right hand view, hit O for object again, see where we are in relation to this object. So that's where it wants to be, it wants to be there. And I think we can make this yeah, I mean, I think that that works. I think that, that looks OK to me. I mean, if we wanted to, we could put a fillet on it, but I don't think we'll bother. What we'll do, I think, is if we want to put a fillet on it afterwards, we can probably use the the bevel deformer to do that. But anyway, for now, we'll leave that where it is. I'll make this editable. Go into polygon mode and with my live selection tool, I'll just click off visible and just do that so that I get the front and rear polygons again, hit I for inset and make it, yeah, five should be okay, I think, just apply that, yep, yeah, that's gonna be fine. And then once again, switch to lines, MB for bridge and bridge between these two so that we get that sorted out, back into garage shade lines. That's looking really nice. I can select with visible only selected my bottom polygon d for extrude and we'll go 20 on this occasion so that we're down there that gives us enough clearance for when the thing pivots i think and then again we can just do uh, if we wish to a new transformation but on this occasion we'll make it just two that looks good so we've got the front half of our cradle made. Let's just copy this, so command drag to copy, and we'll move that. We need to move it to, where are we? Let's have a look, see where we are. We need to go into object mode for a start. Let's just see where we are. There's a bit of a funny number in there, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move this and do it by eye. So go into my top view, object and just position this by eye so that it's just about there that should be fine for us that's going to work select the both of them and connect objects and delete now we've got a single object and back in our polygon mode we can select this polygon and its opposite number so select the both of those, make sure nothing is selected on the bottom, it isn't. Once again, MB for bridge, and we can bridge between the two of those to create the bottom piece. So that all looks good. If we think that this could be a little bit deeper, we could easily go into edge mode, UL for loop selection, and select this bottom loop here. And all we've got to do is just move it up to make that thicker if we want to, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. That's okay. Right, so we've got the actual cradle piece well and truly underway. All we need to do now then, hold down the option key and drop this into a subdivision surface and then we can start working with this and getting it into the shape that we want it. So let's see where we are. We will UL select this loop, tug the vertices there so that we've got that with the full stop key pressed. Do the same with this loop here. Just UL, select those and then tug those into shape. This inner loop we will want here and round the back we will want the same thing. So shift select, select both of those. Full stop key again and tug those into shape. So we've got the front of it nicely set up. And we just need to repeat this process with the back. So this loop, 
draw that into shape. This loop, same thing again. The inner loop at the front and the inner loop at the back. Shift select, full stop key and drag those into shape. All looking very nice and we can then do the same at the bottom and we can do the same here. Just do that and we just got these inner loops here. We can do this one and also this inner loop here. Just drag those into shape and we've got it the way we want it. And that looks really nice. OK, great. So that's all looking really good. Set up very nicely for us. And that looks the way we want it to. So the next thing we can do is to get a hold of this cylinder. And what I'll do is go back into my object here and simply command drag to copy this. And I will zero it out if I just move it up to just beneath the cradle. I'm going to zero it out on the X. And now it's in the correct position. So what I need to do is just go into my edge mode, rectangular selection, and we don't have visible only checked, which is fine. And then I can just simply drag this to where I think it needs to be, which is somewhere around there. That will work for us. And then where I've got the open hole, with my tools, or rather my mesh, I should say, polygon pen, I can just draw this back in. I mean, I could use a closed polygon hole, but for what it is, we'll just draw this back in and close that up. And then all I need to do, live selection, polygon mode, select this and D for extrude and we'll go 20. It isn't enough, but that's OK. We can just simply drag that up until it's just inside the cradle. And that's perfect. That's that's for what this is. That's perfectly good. That will work fine. It does look a little bit weak, doesn't it? So what we can do, we'll just make this slightly bigger. What we'll do is edge mode and in our object here, we will UL, just want to get uh, in the right position to select this loop. That's the one I want. I also want to select this one here, so I'll shift select. And then I can just scale these in. If I just, in the Z, just draw these in slightly. Just It's just to beef the thing up a little bit and make it look a bit stronger. Just bring that not quite to there. So we want some clearance somewhere around there. And then UL again, select this loop here. And this time, just move it up in the Y, just to give it a little bit of extra thickness. And I think that makes it look more solid. It's a much, much stronger looking object now. And I think that'll work. I think that'll work fine. So that completes the building of those two. All we need to do here, again, hold down the option key, drop it into a subdivision surface. And we just got to sort this top part out. So that's really easy. Just go into, or just go a bit closer into it there. That'll be good. Select it once again. We're in edge mode, UL, select the loop that we can't see there just click there and we know that we can tighten that up and then at the top if we're going to lines once again we can just select this top edge here that's it and then tighten that up and then go back into garage shading lines and everything is fine all looking good so that's okay so what we can do then is call this if we just go into here, we've got, we can just call this pillar. And this can be called a cradle for what it is. Those two can then be selected, option G, and call this central pillar. 
assembly if we need to call it anything that'll do nicely so we've got that there and then this is just an inanimate object this here is we can just call this um, cylinder I don't know just call it a cylinder that'll do um, that's a cylinder place this at the top of the object list select both of them option G to group and call this in animus and there we go we've got two objects in there great so we've got the inanimate objects completely made and they're all looking nice the next thing we need to do is create the actual crank arm that will push this up and down via the drive wheel so we'll create the crank arm next and then finish off with the wheel the first thing we're actually going to do is open up our inanimates and we want a cradle and we need to command drag to copy this outside of here and we'll rename this crank arm and in the X we'll move it 190 so that it's in the correct spot so this is going to be the head of the crank arm the next thing to do bring in a cube and drop this well in fact I don't need to drop it in the crank arm I simply need to move it 190 along its X axis and it will be in the correct position anyway and if I move it 10 along its Z axis it will be in the center of the crank arm the cube itself needs to be 20 by 20 by 20 so we'll set that up and then we can drop it down we can make it it's going to our coordinates here if we make this minus 270 we should be about right that should be okay that will work I think for us so we'll make the cube editable and we can go into our polygon mode hit O for object and with our live selection tool we want visible only checked off so that we can select the front and rear polygons and I for inset apply that in our display here lines and then MB and we should be able to bridge between the two of those and we've managed to do that moving on from here then we can set our display back to garage shading lines with our polygon mode still selected check on the visible only in our live selection select the top polygon and I for inset and apply and now we're ready to move on to the next step so what we can do with the cube from our cradle we need to select the polygon here I for inset and let's see what we get so hit O for object and let's just take a look at where we are right so we're a little bit big on along this y-axis here so if we just scale this in we can do it by eye until we think we're about right and I would say that looks okay that looks almost square it doesn't have to be perfect as I say that's that's pretty good so if we just zoom out a little bit so that we can see both this here and we also need this here so what we'll do first is select both of them and connect objects and delete that's instantly given us a more rounded object because of course it's now part of the original cradle and is being affected by this uh, subdivision surface which we've called the crank arm the next thing to do is MB again MB for bridge and we'll bridge between these two here and that creates the crank arm that's given us the shape that we want so now we need to just simply manipulate things down here to get it into the correct shape so we can go into our edge mode UL for loop selection select this we'll select this just shift select I should say and then once again we can shift select in order to select both of those and do the same here and then I'll click in there to select this in a loop that we can't see hold down the full stop key and bring those 
into the correct shape and there we go we've got it we've got what we want and that looks really nice should be if I just click on this here and just again hit my full stop key just to bring that into the shape that I want so now we've actually got the complete crank arm and that's ready to go moving on from here I want one of these cylinders I will select which one do we want just go into our move tool there we go that's the one that I want if I copy this I can then move this down to minus 270 and it should be in the correct place and it is so that's set up and now we can move on from here to the next step moving on from here then we need to do a little bit more grouping so we'll select this crank arm and group that by holding down option and G into another null and I'm going to call this crank T for crank target we can then think about where we're going to place this it's going to go in our beam and it needs to go beneath our link at the same level so we've got our link over here and we've got our crank T over here and that's important so that's great that's all ready to go moving on from here then this cylinder here I'm also going to create another well in fact what I can do is hold down option G to group that into there but I don't actually want that cylinder grouped but I do want this to be called end and this end can then be grouped into our crank target underneath the crank arm the next thing we can do then is set up the IK rig so with the beam selected come into our tags rigging IK tag and we can drag the end null into the end field within the IK tag and straight away we can see that it's working so we can say add goal which gives us an end goal at the same position as the end null here and if we move this we can see that we're starting to get the motion that we would expect to get we just do option or rather command Z to undo that and put it back where it was fantastic so the IK tag is doing its job and the next thing we can worry about is creating the drive wheel I'll bring in a cog wheel at the moment it's too big we'll go into the object or rather the teeth tab actually the object we don't need to really worry about because the plane is fine so we're going to the teeth tab it will be an involute type it will be 20 teeth I'll leave that as it is the root radius I'll make 74 the addendum 88 and the pitch we can leave at 80 that's all good in our coordinates we can drop it down to minus 270 and that matches it up with our end goal we can just move this over to somewhere here it doesn't actually matter if it's perfectly aligned between the inner edge of the cogs and the center circle near enough the central point between the two is good enough and then the next thing we can worry about is the inlay tab so in here we can set the type to spokes the orientation we can leave at zero we want seven spokes the outer radius we can make 64 the inner radius 20 these can all stay the same 
We do want the centre hole, but we want it 10. And that's our cog set up. We'll make the cog editable and switch to point mode. I'll also switch to my front view. Just get a little bit closer. I'll select this point and well, in fact, these four points. And now with, I'll hold down my control key and in my subdivide, I'll just click on the little cog here and set my subdivisions to three. I can now select these four points and once again go into my subdivision, but this time I'll only subdivide two. And I've now got the number of subdivisions that I needed in order to make this work because you can see that we're just about in the correct position here to be able to select these two points. In fact, we'll select all the points that we've got, I think, here. And what we'll do is simply move them just along a little bit here until they're just about central with this cylinder object here. And I'll select the two here, select my scale tool and just move them up and down a little bit. And that should be good for where we are there. The next thing to do is bring in a circle, switch back to my 3D view, so F1. The circle is obviously massive at the moment, it just needs a radius of five as per usual. And then in its coordinates we can move it 190 in the X and minus 270 in the Y and it will be, if we switch back to our front view, in the perfect position. So let's just see where it is in our top view. Hit O for object. And we can see that it's in the same plane as our cogwheel. So that's perfect. We can make it editable select our cogwheel and our circle and connect objects and delete. And now we just have a cogwheel, which is, if we look at our front view again, it's set up to accommodate the cylinder object. And that's perfectly good. So let's just see where we are. What we need to do in our object mode, we just need to make sure that we're in the correct position along our z-axis and we're not, so we need to move this and we need to move it 20. And now it just about is in the correct position. In fact, what we'll do, we'll move it to 20.5, just so there's a little bit of play a little bit of leeway. And now we can think about dropping our cog into an extrusion. So hold down our option key and select extrude object. And in the object mode, obviously it's much too big. 10 will be fine. And we might as well for what it is in our caps, we might as well put a bit of rounding on there. Just make it say one in the rounding and let's see where we are in our top view or from the top let's just see where we are it looks as if we can probably move that extrude a little bit further over in the z just move it by eye around there so that we're pretty well set up that looks good to me okay so i think we've got an object set up that will accommodate the yeah it's going to accommodate the uh, the cylinder here this cylinder 
so we can move that into position we can just oh, don't want to do that we just want to move it along its z axis until it's just about in the correct place which that looks pretty good we can probably make it a little bit bigger actually what we'll do if we just select this object here we'll make it say 32 just make it a little bit bigger and then we can just move it back until it's somewhere there that i think will work fine i mean we're not going to see the the actual back of it so that's okay i think that will work so yeah i mean we're okay there i mean if we needed to make any adjustments with sizes we could but we're we're okay i mean we're not too bad there are we i mean again i said what i probably would do is make um we'll put a, a bevel object possibly on the uh on the crank arm but i'm not going to bother to do that now i'm not going to worry about it too much i mean any adjustments that could that needed to be made with any of this is perfectly easy to do it uh, the cylinder on the caps will put a little bit of a, a fillet on it make it 0.5 that will help a little bit um, and that's you know it's, it's all looking good in the inside there that looks okay so yeah I'm gonna leave that as it is I think that's perfectly good and then the extrude object we can group that into a null call it drive wheel and our cylinder is grouped into that as well i think or is it no it is not quite so we need to just group that under there and now the drive wheel we need to simply make the well in fact what i will do i'm just going to remove that there where i've got my cog here if i In my tools i can say axis center and execute and that should give me that centralized there what i can then do is actually drop the extrude into there zero it out and put my cog back in there and then where i've got my drive wheel here i can also drop that into the extrude and zero it out and then drop the extrude back in there and drop my cylinder in as well and now my drive wheel is set up and if I move it or rotate it I should say around its rotation B it actually works perfectly so that's fine that's all ready to go so let's see where we are let's just make sure that we've got everything set up com completely accurately so with the cylinder the cylinder needs to actually accommodate the end goal so i need to drop that well it, it just it needs to drop into here basically it just needs to be dropped into the drive wheel so the end goal is now in the correct place and that's all good so if we move the wheel around let's just zoom out so that we can see everything if we move the wheel around its rotation b we do get the motion that we would expect to get so our crank arm is doing its job and if we just zero our wheel out everything is back the way it needs to be before we leave our drive wheel we'll just add a kind of a, a an axle a fake it's effectively a fake axle because it won't actually be doing anything but it's just to sort of finish off the look of the thing really um, we'll add one of those so we'll get a cylinder object orientate this plus z give it a radius of 10 and then a height of just 10 as well drop it into the drive wheel and in the coordinates zero it out and we can also move it just a little bit back along its z-axis so that it's just about there just by eye that's fine 
in the caps we can give it a fillet and we'll give it a fillet of one just to finish it off and there it is as i say it's, it's a folk a, a folk axle a faux axle because it's not going to be protruding from the actual drive wheel it's just literally something to give it the look that we're wanting to give it and now we can center things up and we'll leave the drive wheel at that one one thing we will do is drop it just above the beam in the order so that it's beneath the inanimates okay great the next thing that we can worry about then is this link so we'll select our link here let's just see where we are so we've got the front and the back now the link null is clearly not quite in the correct place so what I'm going to do is remove everything from here and with this link all I'm going to do is in the coordinates I'm going to zero it out along its y-axis another thing we need to worry about is the actual orientation of it because we're going to be using a target tag on the on the actual link here so what we need to do is rotate it through 90 degrees around its rotation P so if we say 90 in fact we need to say minus 90 that's what we've got to do then it's orientated correctly and it's looking in the correct direction and then we can place all of these elements back into it so that gets it that far now what's it going to be looking at well it will be looking at the piston so if we give our link a target tag and our target object we can drag the piston into there and that looks as if it's okay so let's see if it is well what we'll do with our crank here what we need to do is give this an espresso expression so we'll come down to programming tags Espresso, and we'll drag cylinder one this is this is going to be the object that's going to give our piston its position y so we'll drag this in and it needs to be in the coordinates what we want is it come into our coordinates here and we'll say global position position or global position y that's what we're going to be interested in and it's got to be global because of course this is grouped so it's it's got parent objects so that's fine and then in the piston here we'll also say the same we're going to say at the, the input stage this time global position y and connect these two together and that's as much as, as we need to do that's the only thing we need to do with espresso here so it's very very simple as i said earlier now let's see what happens when we move the drive wheel so let's rotate the drive wheel yeah now we can see that that's actually working but not quite now the reason for that is because we need an up vector so we'll create a null object just go back to our move tool create the null object and we'll call this up vect for up vector and we'll group this we're going to group this into the beam we'll put it just above the link just put it there and with our target here we'll drop the up vector into the up vector field or the up vector into the up vector field now we can see that it's not quite working yet because it needs to be positioned correctly so it needs to be positioned in fact what we'll do is simply say minus 190 here and now let's try moving our drive wheel and now look at it beautiful we're getting what we need it's doing the job perfectly now we can see that the piston is protruding from the bottom of our object here what we can do to fix that perfectly simple we just need to select our cube here and with well with our rectangular selection 
select this and drag it up into there. And now it should all work okay. And it does. So that's fantastic. All working beautifully. The only thing we really need to do to finish it off is bring in another rectangle. Its plane can be XZ. We can make it 600 in the width, 200 in the height. And if we go into our top view, so F2, hit H, we can see that this is going to work fine for the platform. We just drag it by eye to somewhere here. Yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? And then all we need to do is command drag to create a second rectangle. And this one can be 185 in the width and 50 in the height. And we can just drag this one over here. And again, we'll do this by eye. That looks about right to me, somewhere around there, I would think would be about right. Grab both of them and drag them down until they're in our front view. Let's just see where we are. Yeah, they just need to be somewhere around the, well, as long as they're meeting up with the bottom of our two plinths, or our plinth and our cylinder. That looks about right, doesn't it? And then we can hit C to make them editable. Once again, connect and delete so that we've got a single object. And as per usual, hold down the option key, drop them into an extrude, and we can make this offset about 20. And that looks about right, doesn't it? And if we arrange that somewhere there, that looks pretty good. In the caps, we can give them a bit of a rounding, maybe one. And I would say that looks pretty nice. I think that finishes it off and that looks good. So yeah, we can call this platform and we can drop this into the inanimates and all is well. I think that's good. I think that works perfectly well. So yeah, that's it. And then if we wish to, what we can do with the drive wheel in the coordinates, we'll just zero it out. We've got 90 frames, which is enough. We can record its position, or rather its rotation B at zero. Hit go to end. Bring that to the end. And then we can once again, well, we'll what we'll do, we'll make it 357 degrees and record it there, return to frame zero, and then hit play, and it should be okay. We can see that it is, but the problem at the moment is that we need to go into our F curve, and this just needs to be made linear. So now let's see what it looks like. And it's great. You can see that that works beautifully. What we'll do with our display here is just take the handle line away just to make that more pleasing on the eye. And yeah, there you go. That is how you go about making a beam engine. And there is one last thing that we can do. If we bring this to a stop, we can close the inanimates, we'll close this up and close this up, select everything, option G to group, and call this beam engine. And because we're using 
global positioning, we can move this anywhere in the scene and we know that it will work. So there you go. That's really good and it all works exactly as we want it to. Put it back where it was. And that just about wraps up this tutorial. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this one and that you've uh, got some more knowledge that you can apply to your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.